Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel, Civilegan. So guys, we are going to start new subject today, that is irrigation. Let's start with the introduction first. What is irrigation? The application of water in fields by artificial means such as canals, pumps, etc. for the proper growth of crops during entire crop period is known as irrigation. And irrigation helps in growing agriculture crops, maintaining landscapes, and revegetate disturbed soils in dry areas, and during periods of less than average rainfall. It is the application of controlled amount of water to plants at needed intervals. As there is a separate government department which take care of requirement of water by farmer in different seasons, and this department is irrigation and flood control department, that is INFC department. And the main function for this department is to design canals and other artificial means by which required discharge can be ensured during entire crop period. Irrigation has some advantages as well as some disadvantages. So moving on to next topic that is advantages of irrigation. Irrigation helps in food production, general development of country, good farmer's income, helps in avoiding miscropping makes the country self-sufficient and the canals which we provide for irrigation can be utilized for inland irrigation also. So next topic is disadvantages of irrigation. We use fertilizers for increasing the fertility of field and these fertilizers contain phosphorus which can make the water pollute. So in this way we, irrigation leads to water pollution and excessive irrigation also leads to water logging. So these are the advantages as well as disadvantages of irrigation. Moving on to next topic that is methods of irrigation. There are some methods of irrigation which are free flooding, check flooding, border flooding, basin flooding, furrow irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, drip irrigation. Our first method is free flooding. It is also known as wild flooding as there is no control on distribution of water. So this method is generally adopted for irregular and rolling fields. This method is suitable for the growth of pastures. Next method is check flooding. This method is similar to the free flooding but only difference is that flow of water is controlled by surrounding the area by bunds th uh, that is embankments or causeway. The next method is border flooding. In this method, field is divided into number of strips which are separated by borders made of local soil. And the time taken by water to irrigate strip of land is calculated as t equals to 2.303 into y divided by f into log of q upon q minus f, where y is depth of water, f is infiltration capacity which can be calculated in meter per second, q is discharge which is calculated in meter per second, meter cube per second an area of strip which is calculated in meter square next method is basin flooding it is a special type of check flooding in which basins are provided under individual trees and this method is generally adopted for orchard trees our next method is furrow irrigation in this method, instead of wetting the entire area, only half to one by third of total area is wetted. And the area is wetted with the help of small channels in the field. As the amount of water lost due to evaporation and percolation will be very less. So, this method is more efficient than previous method. Our next method is sprinkler irrigation. It, in this method, water is distributed with the help of network of pipes and pumps. It is highly technical and very costly method, therefore not used in India. This method can be used in the following condition, where scarcity of water, irregular topography and permeability of soil is very less or high. The efficiency of water application and distribution is very high. So, the evaporation and percolation chances are very less in this method. 
the next method is drip irrigation in this method water is directly applied to the roots of plants with the help of drip nozzles highly efficient method are as evaporation and percolation losses are very less but it is very costly in spring drip or drip irrigation water distributes very efficiently hence efficiency of water distribution for sprinkler and drip irrigation is 100% so these are the methods of irrigation now moving on to next topic that is classification of irrigation classification of irrigation is done in two parts that is surface irrigation and subsurface irrigation in surface irrigation water is applied over the surface and it is done in two methods natural surface irrigation it is rainfall and artificial surface irrigation that is sprinkler or flooding in subsurface irrigation what is applied below the surface these are also done in two methods natural subsurface irrigation that is seepage and artificial subsurface irrigation that is drip irrigation so guys this is about the introduction of irrigation there are some notes that are like salts of calcium sodium magnesium potassium are injurious for soil if the concentration is high if it is greater than 700 ppm then water is injurious for some soil but if the concentration is greater than 2000 ppm then the water is injurious for all types of soil the next point is concentration of sodium is very high as compared to other cations and it its proportion is measured by factor known as sodium adsorption ratio that is sar sar is for sodium adsorption ratio is equals to sodium upon under root calcium plus magnesium divided by 2 and to reduce the concentration of sodium in soil gypsum is added so guys this is all about the introduction of irrigation our next chapter is water requirement of crop which will be cover in the next video if you like our video please share and subscribe to our youtube channel severa and if you have any doubts please mention in the comment section